review. So today's lesson is a review on trigonometry, not calculus. So I need you to look in the box. I know you know this. So basic right triangle trigonometry, having an understanding of the six trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, the most popular way to remember it is so katoa, where sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And you still need to know reciprocal to know that sine and cosecant are reciprocals, <clears throat> cosine and secant are reciprocals, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. All right, let's look at example number one. Look at the right triangle. Can you tell me what sine theta equals? So you see the unknown angle. What's opposite of the unknown angle? And what's the length of the hypotenuse? That's simple. Cosine, what's adjacent to the unknown angle over the hypotenuse? Tangent, opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent from the unknown angle. Just a reminder, the word opposite and adjacent only has meaning when you look at the angle. So where's the angle now opposite and adjacent? So it's 4 over 3. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's 5 over 3. Trig functions are often defined as circular functions. Now the reason that is, a right triangle only goes up to that 90 degree mark, right? And then what happens when we get beyond 90 and get to like 180 or 270, 360 or on further? We need to have a better understanding of a circular understanding of trigonometry so we can get beyond a right triangle and have higher angles and negative angles. So look at the diagram to the right. There's an explanation. And notice this one's considered to be in standard position because the positive x-axis and then the terminal side is where it ended. And you can see how the angle was measured. Do you remember that positive angles are measured counterclockwise? And that negative angles are, ma are measured clockwise? So what direction is this arrow going? Count. That means it's a positive angle. If you measured it the other direction, clockwise, then it would be a, a negative angle. A circular understanding is I understanding we don't say the word hypotenuse for circular, but the word radius, they're equivalent. The radius is the hypotenuse. And that the x and y coordinate become the legs of that right triangle. Where x and y, you can see the two legs. And the angle that we're looking for, you can see where that is too, in terms of inside. So, it says the circular definitions of trigonometry. So instead of using Sokotoa, we're using the x and the y coordinate and the radius. Now, of course, a unit circle has a radius of one, but that may not always be the case. You might have a circular understanding where the radius is not one. So how would you find the radius if you only knew the x and y coordinate? That's from the Pythagorean theorem, right? That's just getting the r by itself. The Pythagorean theorem would be uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. To get x r by itself, you take the square root. That's where it comes from. So a point on a unit circle, or a point not even on a unit circle, just a point on a circle. What are the definitions to find sine, cosine, tangent, and so on? So now we're using x, y, and r. So sine is not opposite over hypotenuse. Sine goes with which coordinate? The y. And if it's a unit circle, the r would be 1, right? So one divided y divided by 1, the answer would just be y. But if it's not a unit circle, we need to know what the radius is. So y over r, cosine goes with x, tangent y over x, and then these are reciprocals, right, of what's on the left. Turn the page. Here's a question. Find sine theta, cosecant theta, and cotangent theta. If theta is an angle in standard position whose terminal side passes through the point negative 5 and 2. We don't need a graphical representation here. What does x equal? What does y equal? What don't I know that I need to find? 
The radius. How do I find the radius if the radius is not 1? What's the formula? The square root of? Which is negative 5 squared plus 2 squared. So what is that? What's the length of the radius? 25 plus 4 obviously is 29. Yes, leave it at root 29. Now you can answer, answer these questions. What's the definition of sine theta using a circle instead of a right triangle? Sine is y over r. What is our y again? 2. And our r is root 29. You do not need to radicalize it. Is that the right word? Rationalize it. Or radical. Maybe I was watching the news yesterday. Rational. They had caught some American that was high up in the... Whatever. He was radicalized on the net. So I was thinking that the math for, for the radical. Rationalize. You will leave the square root in the denominator. It is okay. And life will go on. And it's perfect the way it looks. There are times we don't want that. But right now is not that time. Right now you leave it. You let it go. What is uh, cosecant? And we just did it, right? So that would be root 29 over 2. And cotangent. What's the circular understanding of cotangent? So tangent is y over x. Cotangent is x over y. Let's look at the next one. Circular function trigonometry makes use of reference angles in triangles. And it's really not much different than right triangle trigonometry. Think of it as an extension of right triangle trig, where this is where our unit circle comes in. So that 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90, those are special right triangles. And an understanding, right, of why is it 1 half and root 3 over 2, right, and root 2 over 2, those come from special right triangles where we make the hypotenuse 1 and those other numbers are the legs where we get the trig values from. All right. Example number 3. It says draw angles in standard position and make reference triangles. I'm going to say what, kind of what they mean. So, do you know how to draw the angle 210? Let's start there. Standard position means where, how should you start this? An arrow pointing to the right. That's the positive x-axis. To make my life easier, I actually lightly draw in the other axes. This just gives me a reference, if you like, for the terminal side. So they're really invisible, what I did, but I put them very lightly with a little dotted line so that I have a better sense of where 210 is going. What quadrant is 210 degrees in? Yeah. And like how far into the third quadrant? Because 180 is straight across, right? So if I measure this, right, what direction does a positive angle get measured? Mm -hmm. Did you see how I did that? The reference angle is simply this, is that the nearest horizontal angle you subtract from the angle you have. The reference angle is this angle that's always less than 90 that it makes with the horizontal. You can do that intuitively too, right? So what does this angle make with the horizontal? And it's always less than 90. So that reference angle is what? We don't need a reference angle triangle. You need a better understanding of a horizontal. What angle does it make with the horizontal line? And it's always less than 90. So in this case, the reference angle is 30. That means the values that we have for 30 degrees in the first quadrant, those numbers we're going to use, but the answer could be positive or negative when we do that. So when I think of 30 degrees in quadrant 1, do you know, this is an extension of this part of the lesson, do you know what the order of the coordinates are at 30 degrees or pi over 6? Just that, first quadrant. What's the x coordinate there? Root 3 over 2. And what's the y coordinate? And then we think in quadrant number 3, what's the signs for the x and y? Negative and negative. So cosine goes with the x or the y coordinate. Because now this is a unit circle. So which co coordinate does it go with? 
So the answer, it goes with the X, right? Sine goes with the Y, cosine goes with the X. What is the value of cosine 210? Negative root 3 over 2. There's not that many unique numbers on a unit circle, right? Root 3 over 2, 1 half, and root 2 over 2. And then the ends, 0 and 1s, right? They go on the ends. But what order are they in, right? Is what we have to think about. So the answer is that. Can we look at the next one together? Can you draw 315? And do you know what quadrant 315 is? How far into the fourth quadrant is 315? And to answer that question, do you know what the angle is straight down where the quadrant starts? This one straight down, what is that angle? So when I subtract 315 and 270, what angle do I get? So how much further into this quadrant is it? 45 degrees. Which is what? Exactly in the middle. How do I measure a positive angle again? Counterclockwise. A reference angle is not made with the vertical. A reference angle is made with the horizontal. What angle is this with the horizontal that's less than 90? It's 45 on both sides, isn't it, that make up 90? Why does that help me? Because if I know 45 degrees in quadrant 1, I use that point. So in quadrant 1, what's the coordinates for 45 degrees? Root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. The easiest one to remember. It's an isosceles right triangle, right? The x and the y agree. They meet. They're the same value, right? And now think what's negative and what's positive. So in quadrant number 4, which coordinate is negative, x or y? Good. Now think what's tangent. Well, for tangent, it is y over x. I don't care how ugly it is. Any number divided by itself is going to be 1. And a negative divided by a positive is going to be negative 1. And that's your answer. An understanding of the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. And these ones, right? They're the same number. So when you divide that number, it's going to be 1. But a negative divided by a positive will make it negative 1. All right, example 4. This is bringing back good memories, isn't it? Just kidding. So, can you convert that to degrees without having to go time? Do you know how to convert anything back and forth, what the converting ratio is? If I have radians, what do I multiply times to change it to degrees? So I'll make that little note here. Even though I don't want you to do that, I want you to just know it because you've seen those radians so often, you know the degrees by memory, like a times table, right? But I'm just saying, if you go from radians to degrees, it's pi over 180. If you go from degrees to radians, it's pi over 180 over... Did I do that right? Yes, radians to degrees uh, is 180 over pi. From degrees to radians is pi over 180. I don't really want you. You can go pi over 2 times 180 over pi and get an answer. Or you can know it because you've seen it so often on the unit circle. When it's an unknown radian, when you don't see it that often, so be it. But you know this. Pi over 2 is what in degrees? 90. Pi over 4 is what in degrees? Pi over 3. Pi over 6, you know it. And if you didn't know it, you can go 180 over pi and multiply it together. How about the other way? Same thing, 5 pi over 4. What is that in degrees? Do you know that by memory? Do you know your inner circle that well? Do you know what quadrant 5 pi over 4 is when you mentally go around the circle? Whenever it's over 4, it's in the middle of each quadrant. In quadrant 1, it's 1 pi over 4. In quadrant 2, it's 3 pi over 4. In quadrant 3, it's 5 pi over 4. What is that middle angle in quadrant number 3? 225. 270. Think, 
mentally, picture your unit circle. Go all the way around. Where does it land up, right? Where is that in radians? Three. Got it? Oh, this one's tricky. Negative 120. If you're just converting, it's not as tricky. 120. Don't even think about the negative. What quadrant is it? What's the radian, right, that goes with it? If you ever have to, you can always go pi over 180. And you don't have to reduce it down. But sometimes it's helpful because you've got to be able to know how to use it. This is negative 2 pi over 3. To know the unit circle, the way you know a times table, right? Do you know what 8 times 6 is? Or are you going 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, right? No, you know it. You've got to know the unit circle like you know the times table, right? You're not thinking what 8 times 6 is because you know it. Like a sight word when you learn how to read. Uh-oh. Let's do this. Tangent, 5 pi over 6. What quadrant is 5 pi over 6? In quadrant 1, it's 1 pi over 6. In quadrant 2, it's 5 pi over 6. It's a positive angle. What's the reference angle here? 30. And what's the order of the coordinates at 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2 and? In quadrant 2, which one's negative, which one's positive? And the y coordinate is positive. Now, what's the definition of tangent? Y over x. Do you notice they have the same denominator when you divide? So all you look at are the numerators, because the denominators divide out. So what's the y numerator? 1. What's the y denominator, or the y, the x numerator? So it's 1 over negative root 3, or you could write it as negative root 3 over 3. That is a good answer. Next one. Where's negative 3 pi over 4? What direction are we going? What quadrant are we in? So first of all, am I going counterclockwise or clockwise? When there's a 4 in the denominator, that's a 45 degree reference angle, it's going to be in the middle of the quadrant. And the question is, it's in the middle of what quadrant? And the answer is, it's in quadrant number 3. We still count the same way, even if it's a negative angle. In what direction do I measure it? What's the reference angle? 45 degrees. What is the x and y coordinate? And in quadrant 3, both are negative. What's the definition of cosine? It's just the x. So the answer is negative root 2 over 2. What we don't practice, we forget. And you haven't practiced trigonometry for months. So you have to be easy on yourself. That's why I'm saying in February is going to be our trig month. We're going to practice and practice, and it will come back. There is a file folder somewhere. Okay? I'm not even going to do graphing today. Eight. What's the angle? Five pi over three. What quadrant is 5 pi over 3? And it's measured counterclockwise. What's the reference angle here that made with the horizontal? The order of the coordinates when it's a 60 degree reference angle is 1 half and root 3 over 2. In quadrant number 4, the x is positive and the y is negative. Cosecant's the reciprocal of the y. That's good enough. One way I remember reference angles, 
is to know if the radian is over 6, it's a 30 degree reference angle. If the radian is over 4, it's a 45. And if it's over 3, it's a 30. 30? It's a 60. That's one way to remember the reference angles. And if you memorize the first quadrant, then you can have the whole circle, right? It just matters what's positive and what's negative. So if you memorize the first quadrant, you have the whole circle. You just have to think which one's positive and which one is negative. Turn the page. All right, you got this. Unit circle sign. Sine of pi over 6. It's a 30 degree reference angle, right? Over 6. What's the y coordinate there? Done. 0. Hey, is there a point at 0? What's the point? Positive 1 and 0. What's the y coordinate there? 0. How about cosine at the same angle? What's the value of cosine at zero? One, because the x coordinate is one. Where's pi over two? What's that point on a unit circle? Zero and positive one. So what's the value of sine at pi over two? What's the y coordinate? One. What's the x coordinate? Zero. How about pi? It's negative one and zero. What's the y coordinate there? What's the tangent? That would be y over x. Zero divided by negative one, which is zero. How about down here? What's the point? Zero and negative one. What's the y coordinate there? What's the x coordinate there? Negative pi. So go clockwise. Where do we end up? Well, negative pi and positive pi are the same, same point. So what's the x value there? Tangent of negative pi over 2. We're going clockwise, 90 degrees clockwise. Where do we end up? At the bottom. What's the point there at the bottom? And y over x. Negative 1 over 0 means it's undefined. Whenever you divide by 0. One thing that we have to remember is that the x coordinate goes with cosine and the y coordinate goes with sine. And that tangent is simply cosine over sine. That's going to help you around the unit circle. Oh, it says that down here. Next box. What's one of the identities for tangent? Sine over cosine. How about for cotangent? It's the reciprocal, right? of tangent. So it's cosine over sine. And then here are some more reciprocal, right? Cosecant and sine are reciprocals. Secant and cosine are reciprocals. Number 10. Sine theta equals 3 over fine. Find the possible values for cosecant. If this is the case, we're going back to a right triangle understanding. So if I draw a right triangle, the definition of sine is <clears throat> opposite over hypotenuse. How long, what's the length of the, hy the opposite side? And what's the length of the hypotenuse? Do you recognize this as a triplet, a Pythagorean triplet? Or do you have to go a squared plus b squared equals c squared and solve it? What's the missing side? It's a triplet. What's cosecant using this triangle? Did I need the triangle or could I have just done the reciprocal? But now that I have the triangle, what's B? Adjacent over hypotenuse. What would the answer be? How about tangent? What would it be? Opposite over adjacent. Oa, right? That would be 3 over 4. All right, last part of the trig lesson, all pre-calculus. 
And I know you're thankful there's a bunch of stuff to practice in this assignment, right? To get back on track. Example 11. Can you solve these equations? They talk about working backwards. It means that you're given a point and you have to tell me the angle that it goes with. When you solve a trig equation, what's the angle is going to be the answer. So cosecant equals this. What angle goes with that? And you're picking an answer between 0 and 2 pi. So what's the definition of cosecant? Using x and y. So let's go back to that concept that it's the reciprocal of sine. What's the reciprocal of this? So that would mean sine x would equal what? Negative root 3 over 2. So then, what angle on your unit circle is the y coordinate that? And there's two answers. What angle on the unit circle is the y coordinate? Negative root 3 over 2. It's, the, it's a 60 reference. It's going to be over 3. What is it? 4 pi over 3, and that's in quadrant number 3, and the other one's in quadrant number 4. What are the two angles where the y value is negative root 3 over 2? You found it. How about this one? Cotangent. I'm going to put it over 1. The definition of cotangent is x over y, the reciprocal of tangent. So in this example, the x is root 3 and the y is 1. I'm going to put 2's underneath them so you can match it up with the unit circle. What angle matches that on the unit circle? <coughs> root 3 over 2 and 1 half. One angle that matches it is pi over 6. But you know what? If they were both negative and you divided them, you'd still get a positive answer. So the other one that matches it is, so negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half matches it. Because a negative divided by a negative is positive to get the answer I need. All right, last one. Can you solve this equation? Know that when there's an exponent with trigonometry, the exponent is put in the middle of the trig, not at the end. To answer this, I'm going to isolate the cosine squared part. So to isolate cosine, the inverse of subtracting one is to and the inverse of multiplying by 2 is 2. And then the last step is to take the, know that the answer could be positive or negative. negative when you solve a quadratic. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 2 stays root 2. Because you're, you're not used to seeing the number as 1 over root 2, if you rationalize the denominator, you'd find out that's the same number as Root 2 over 2. Well, that one you do recognize, right? Root 2 over 2. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what angles is the x-coordinate positive root 2 over 2, and what angles is it negative root 2 over 2? At pi over 4, the x-coordinate is positive root 2 over 2. At 3 pi over 4, the x-coordinate is negative root 2 over 2. At 5 pi over 4, the x coordinate is negative root 2 over 2. And at 7 pi over 4, the x coordinate is positive root 2 over 2. So tell me every angle where the x coordinate is either positive root 2 over 2 or negative root 2 over 2. And those are your answers. And we could keep going, but the restriction was from 0 to 2 pi. All right. We are done. Mr. G Math over.